So, I've already made a video ranking all the different Joker portrayals, but I felt like now that all is said and done with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker movie, it was a good time to update this list, as the latest iteration of the character has made quite some waves and was not included in the previous list. But this is not just going to be the same list done again with the addition of Joaquin Phoenix. I've opted to streamline things a bit by making a few omissions, so I will not be including animated Jokers in this list, and besides, if I did, we all know who the winner of this list would be, but I will continue to include the Valeska twins from Gotham, because while they may have never been officially the Joker, they do at least hold that spot. It's pretty heckin' obvious. Well, get comfortable, sit back, relax, subscribe, we're gonna be looking at all the different live-action Jokers. I'm expecting a bit of heat for this one, but please do remember this is my subjective opinion at the end of the day, and I think your opinion of the Joker will vary depending on which one you kind of relate to the most. I think a big part of the Joker character is that it's kind of like that little sadistic side that we all have, that kind of indulges a little bit of humor in someone else's misfortune. If you've ever looked up a nutshot compilation or anything like that, you've probably laughed at someone else's pain before. The Joker is what happens if you do nothing but indulge that. And I think each Joker interprets that in a different way and we'll all have one that we relate to a little more than others. So do be gentle with me in the comment section, okay? Okay, so in ninth place, last place, and a very low ninth place, you can all predict this one, it's Jared Leto. If you know my videos, you know I don't like Jared Leto's Joker. And that's not entirely Jared Leto's fault. This entire vision of the character is just off to me. David Ayer allegedly did a lot of research on Instagram drug dealers to kind of come up with his vision of the Joker. But uh, I never thought Instagram drug dealer when I thought Joker. Now you can't always judge a book by its cover, but in this case, yeah, you pretty much can because there's not much else to judge. The Joker only appears in Suicide Squad for the best part of about 10 minutes, which a lot of people will say is unfair to judge based on that. But there are Jokers on this list that had less screen time in their debut that stole the show with the brief bit of screen time that they had as they should and won over the hearts of audiences everywhere in their first attempt. Jared Jared Leto's Joker just lacks the sense of humor and artistry that the Joker has. There's very little sadism in there either, he just seems to be a straightforward gangster with a slightly clown theme. And even then, that clown theme is completely distilled by the gangster gigolo aesthetic. There is really very little to this. He kind of feels more like a Fortnite skin than he does an actual character. Which is what makes this so disappointing, but so unsurprising. I'd like to say that Jared Leto did the best that he could, but at the same time, oof, the performance is not much better. And the laugh, my god, the laugh. He sounds like a honking goose. It just sounds sarcastic. There really isn't any redeeming quality to this Joker, sadly. Which is why it's at the very bottom of the list. In 8th place, speaking of Jokers that had significantly less screen time than Jared Leto but left a better impression, how about the OnStar Joker as portrayed by Curtis Armstrong? In the mid-90s, Batman and the Joker starred in a series of OnStar commercials, usually involving Batman in the Batmobile going up against an opponent in a different car. And can we just talk about how awesome these commercials are? Like, imagine just watching TV and then suddenly, boom, Batman's on. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And there's so little that the characters actually get to do in these things. The Joker is just there to kind of be a moustache twirling foil for Batman. But the fact is, Curtis Armstrong's Joker is pretty inoffensive. Curtis Armstrong's performance is very over-the-top comic foil, which does fit the Joker for these short segments, and it would be too much for a movie, but it works here. And the very same goes for the makeup. In terms of his appearance, he almost looks like he's pulled straight out of a Neil Adams Joker artwork, as he has the very exaggerated facial features. But for like a 30-second ad, it's just about right. You don't need to be subtle in an advert. Context and format is everything of what makes this Joker work, and it's a perfectly entertaining performance all around. In seventh place is Jay, as portrayed by Cameron Monaghan in Gotham, who once again gets less screen time than Jared Leto's Joker did. Jay is the third iteration of the Joker character that Cameron Monaghan has played in the TV series Gotham. Jay is the evolution of Jeremiah Valeska to our final definitive Joker 
for Gotham. But sadly, he's the most inconsistent version yet. The show makes a big point of establishing the character's intellect, but his plan in the end is very stupid and ridiculous. The writing definitely lets the character down, but what doesn't let the character down is Cameron Monaghan's performance. Through the thickest prosthetic makeup job Cameron Monaghan has had on this show yet, he still manages to deliver an extremely expressive performance as the most ghoulish version of the Joker yet. He has the sense of humour that the Joker needs to have, and he's just as sadistic, and Cameron Monaghan is definitely channeling kind of a Mark Hamill-esque performance with this one, and how can that possibly be a bad thing with the Joker? The way that Jay clumsily stumbles around, it's just, it's something unnerving about watching him. And that's only made more uncanny by the makeup job on this guy. Jay looks like what would happen if you combined the Joker with the Crypt Keeper. Truth be told, I just really wanted to see more of Jay. And the thing is, after all the promise, we really didn't get to see that character come through in the end, which is really, really disappointing. In sixth place, we have a choice that a lot of you are going to hate me for, so yeah, unsubscribe accordingly, I guess. Arthur Fleck as portrayed by Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix is just about the most perfect actor that could portray the Joker, and he delivers just about the most perfect performance you could possibly expect from that. And everything involved in this whole film's existence feeling like this perfect whirlwind of just pure imagination and raw talent. The end result was a film that had a message in mind and then diluted it with so many other messages and just ended up rolling it into this one tiny little ball of diluted messages which paints one singular picture. Life kind of sucks, doesn't it? And people defend this by saying, yeah, it's from the Joker's perspective, and if that works for you, it works for you, but as far as I'm concerned, by that logic, any film could get away with absolutely anything, because you could just say it's told from the perspective of a mental patient. But after my little noob moment on YouTube, I've decided I'm not going to bow to all the people that say, oh, you don't like the Joker, you just don't understand the Joker. It's the ultimate pretentious DC fan cliche, miss me with that nonsense. The film is based basically just a really vague image that's open to all kinds of interpretation and different people have interpretations of it and some make people happy, others just make people like me feel a bit blank. The same ends up being true of the Joker, sadly, in this film. We see Arthur Fleck, a troubled man, go on to become a violent psychopath, but we never really see him go on to become the Joker properly, and that's partly down to this being an origin movie. But for my tastes, none of this really adds anything to the character of the Joker or the mythology. It's like watching a feature-length version of one of Heath Ledger's Joker's ramblings. And the thing is, it tackles modern issues, but opts to do it in the 1970s just because movie, I guess. And the 1970s aesthetic doesn't add anything to it. It. The Joker's makeup looking like John Wayne Gacy adds nothing to it. Sadly, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's just a film that plays it really safe by just kind of stating the obvious. And sadly, that's all this Joker does is just parrot on about the obvious, which is such a crippling shame because, oh my god, Joaquin Phoenix delivers the performance of a lifetime. It's worth buying on Blu-ray just for him. In fifth place is the Joker as portrayed by Cesar Romero. Can you imagine the uproar we'd have in today's world if an actor of Cuban descent were cast as the Joker? Diversity casting has gone too far this time. Good lord. This is the thing where we didn't have the internet to get all these things announced and then discuss them. We just kind of took things for what they were. And I think we can all admit that Cesar Romero as the Joker works really well. Look, you can slag him off today, you can say, oh yeah, it doesn't work today, much like the rest of the 60s Batman show, but to be honest, in a world in of itself, as a self-contained thing, the 60s Batman show still works. As does this version of the Joker, and what's so noteworthy is that Cesar Romero was the very first person to ever portray the Joker. This is the guy that set down the groundwork for people like Jack Nicholson and Mark Hamill to build off of. As well as that, if you can ignore the slight moustache that you can see underneath the white makeup, his appearance is pretty much bang on what the Joker should be. The Joker's design, to be honest, is one that's not really easy to get wrong because at the end of the day, it's a purple suit and white clown paint. I mean, how can it go wrong? Oh wait, Jared Leto. But seeing this all come together for the very first time and seeing the origins of Joker performances, it, it works really well. And Cesar Romero delivers a very antagonistic, <laughs> literal moustache twirling villain, and that's just brilliant. There is an art to that that no one should ever deny. In fourth place is Jeremiah Valeska as portrayed by Cameron Monaghan. Jeremiah Valeska is probably one of the most subtle versions of the Joker ever put to screen, which 
to be honest didn't contrast very well with the rest of the Gotham TV show. But when you really watch these scenes in isolation, you can actually see how brilliant this version of the Joker is. If you were to stick him in a much slower paced and more serious Batman universe, <coughs> the DCEU, among other more youthful actors for the roles, you'd have something pretty incredible on your hands. Jeremiah Valeska still has something of a sense of humour, but he plays a Joker that's very in denial about himself. That very subtly becomes more and more twisted, which makes for an extremely eerie version of the character. And I really must say, I really respect that. I feel like Jeremiah Valeska in isolation is probably the best version of the Joker. As he can do the Joker stuff that we all know and love, but he's generally a lot more interesting. And he's just very, very creepy, which is what I think works so well about him. In third place is the Joker as portrayed by Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger's Joker is a straight up anarchist. There's no value to what he's doing. He's not doing what he's doing for a prize. He just wants to bring Gotham to its knees for no reason. He just treats Gotham City as his playground to do with as he pleases and just kind of relishes in the good times that he has with doing that. Now that is perfect. That is true raw Joker. But to make it worse, this Joker is chillingly plausible. The Christopher Nolan Batman film has very much tried to stay in a very realistic world, and their interpretation of the Joker was no exception to that. He was neither a cartoony clown nor was he gratuitously violent like what we'd go on to see in the New 52 era of DC comic books. He was a terrorist that donned the iconic Joker look and how realistically convincing this was just made it all the more terrifying. In second place, we have Jack Napier as portrayed by Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson as the Joker seemed like the perfect storm because Jack Nicholson's kind of a creepy, playful kind of a guy who was very well seasoned in playing psychopaths on screen. And his Joker was just about as classic Joker as you could possibly get, from his playful and humorous demeanor to his appearance, which looked straight out of the comic books, complete with exaggerated facial feature prosthetics. The only major difference was that Jack Nicholson asked for the Joker's pinstripe trousers to be swapped out with played, and has definitely given this character something of his own signature look. Now while Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker is probably about as comic book accurate as it gets, then there is one major departure, and that is that this Joker has a concrete defined origin story, and continues to know his real name throughout the entire story. Now, a lot of Jokers on this list have done that. Jeremiah Valeska continued to know his own real name and did have a concrete way of which he became the traditional Joker that we know and love. However, it's pretty unclear what drove him insane in the first place. It's implied that he was just born bad, which I really like. You could say that Jack Nicholson was also born bad as he was a very hard as nails gangster before making his turn into the vat of acid. Now, to be honest, I didn't find Jack Napier to be a very interesting character until becoming the Joker, and I think that's my only issue here. This take on the origin just wasn't... It, it just wasn't as interesting. A generic street tough falls into a vat of acid and becomes the greatest villain ever. I guess it's one of those things where the ends justify the means. But the thing is, once he becomes the Joker, he's so good with this, that's why he's in second place. So then we have first place for the best live action Joker, and that is... Jerome Valeska as portrayed by Cameron Monaghan. Channel Pup veteran subscribers will probably have been able to guess this from a mile off. Many of the main live action Jokers have kind of covered very specific areas of the Joker. They've each covered different ground in which the character can be. Cesar Romero was your cackling, nutty Saturday morning clown villain. Jack Nicholson was your manipulative yet jovial man with a plan. Heath Ledger was the anarchist with no plan. Jared Leto was the Joker put through an Instagram filter to make 12 year olds everywhere think he's, he's so cool. And then we have the different versions of the Joker in Gotham covering different ground, like Jeremiah Valeska being the sociopath and Jay just being kind of an outright mess. But I don't think I've ever seen a live action Joker Joker encompass everything that makes the Joker so much as they have Jerome Valeska, which is funny because he's the only Joker on this list to be kind of uh, disproven as the Joker. Jerome is probably one of the most comedic Jokers we've ever had in live action. He's one of the few where you actually really do laugh along with him sometimes, but he's also very creepy. There are times when he goes from channeling Mark Hamill to channeling Jack Nicholson to channeling he 
Heath Ledger. He can be your slow-talking, manipulative psychopath. He can be the cackling, nutty clown. He can do the showmanship. He can do the comedy side of things, both physical and verbal. He's got great body language in the role. And while he may not retain the color scheme of the Joker, he certainly has the same uncanny appearance, thanks to Cameron Monaghan's very wide-stretching mouth and kind of creepy-looking eyes. And his appearance only gets more and more uncanny the more they mess about with his face in terrific body horror elements that channel the new 52. Jerome has pretty much done it all except for just getting the white paint and green hair. And that's exactly what I've wanted to see from every Joker on this list at some stage. What do you guys think? Who's the best Joker? Who's the worst Joker? Comment below and discuss. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my Patreon and my Discord. And now a word from our sponsor. Oh, hey gang, look at this. Channel Goat is back. But he's got bad news. His computer was hacked by the Adzinko gang, and they leaked his private information. And now his goat cojones are there for everybody to see. Ah man, that's quite a predicament you got there, Channel Goat. And the thing is, you're not the only one. Do you know how many people get hacked per year and have their personal information and data spread online for all to see? A lot. Like, look it up. And I know what the rest of you are thinking. It hasn't happened to me, yet. Well, emphasis on yet. I mean, how old are you? Right, now how long is the average human lifespan? That's a lot of time that you could get hacked in. And by the time that's done, everybody is gonna know what your pee, -pee looks like. Do you really want that? Do you really want the world to see your pee, -pee? You run that risk every single day, guys. Seriously, hackers, pretty talented people. Which is why I, for one, use NordVPN to protect my private information and my Nords. It shuffles your data so that it can't be found by hackers, but not only that, it can also unlock the worldwide range of Netflix. And, like, who wouldn't want that, right? Now you can really maximize your subscription. The fact is, guys, you could save yourself the stress and a lawsuit by simply browsing with NordVPN. And I've made it easy for you. A link is in the description below. And this subscription comes with a promise. Nobody has to know what you're into anymore. <laughs> you little furry, you. Anyway, sign up today. Seriously, do it. Please, for your sweet little puppy. This video is brought to you by Zentai Zentai for all your cosplay needs. Link is in the description below and they are very cool and good. Cosplay your favorite characters or send in one of your own designs. Affordable prices and very high quality. Made to order and made to measure. But most of all, made to be heckin' awesome. If you couldn't already tell. Guys, can you believe where we are now and where we started? How long ago it was that Channel Pup or Channel Goat even came about? Because it really wasn't that that long when you think about it. Can you believe the amount of support I've received from this community, from, from all of you subscribing to the channel and everything? It's, it's unreal. It's a dream come true for me. But behind the YouTubers you watch usually comes a bit of a truth is that they're often dirt poor. Now I've had the good fortune of being able to grow this YouTube channel and hopefully turn it into a career, but I'm gonna need a little bit of help along the way to even the odds to make ends meet so that I can use all of the possible time that I have to make videos for you guys as opposed to doing something mundane for barely enough money to make it worth its while. I've done all that. I've lived that life. The fact is, together we all built Channel Pup. We made it what it is today and I want to keep the ball rolling on that. I don't ever want to stop doing this because this is the most gratifying job I've ever had. And I think the most pleasurable hobby anyone could ever have. I don't take any of the support that I receive from you guys for granted, but if in any way you're wondering if maybe you could do a little more for the channel even, then I want I want to direct you to the Patreon link in the description below. It would mean the world to me to have your support via Patreon. It can help me to make ends meet, it can help me to better my content, it can help me to have more time to really work on this stuff. But you know what, I'm not just going to take your support and run. No way, Jose. I've, uh, in the Patreon, you can access exclusive videos via the Pups Project Room playlist where you can see different projects I've been working on or have worked on that have either not made it to YouTube for general viewing or have been cancelled or well you can get a little view of the process that goes behind the Channel Pup videos and productions. As well as that you tend to get advanced previews of 
the bigger Channel Pup projects, our tentpole event projects. If you've seen Marvelous Tales of Spider-Man, you'll be aware that that was released on the Patreon first, and uh, 20 days later, approximately, was released for general viewing on YouTube. That's not the only time I'm gonna do this. But you know what? If you can't do the Patreon, or are just not interested in doing the Patreon, I fully understand. Like, it, it's, it's still a big ask, in my opinion. And what counts most is your support. So, as always, thank you so much, guys. I've been Channel Pup, and I will think of a better catchphrase next time. Now please leave me alone!